He had murder in his heart. He wasn't thinking, I just want to aggravate and assault them. He had murder in his heart when he did that. Two officers gunned down. When cops commit crimes, they should be held accountable just like any other citizens, and in each of these cases, justice was served. Let's look at the police officers that got caught for their crimes and received a life sentence. Number 6. Wayne Cousins Wayne Cousins was a 48-year-old London Metropolitan Police who murdered a woman named Sarah Everard in a case that sparked alarm in the UK over women's safety and the trustworthiness of the police. Miss Everard was walking home from a friend's house in Clapham, South London, when she was abducted. While Cousin chose Miss Everard at random, the attack was carefully planned out. Cousin spent at least a month traveling to London from Deal, Kent, where he lived, to research how best to carry out his crimes. Several days before the attack, he booked a hire car which he would use for the abduction, as well as a roll of self-adhesive film advertised as a carpet protector on Amazon. After finishing a 12-hour shift at the U.S. Embassy that morning, Cousins, a parliamentary and diplomatic protection officer, went out hunting for a lone young woman to kidnap and rape, the prosecution said. The court heard how Cousins used the knowledge he had gained from working on COVID patrols in January and his Metropolitan Police issue warrant card to trick his victim under the guise of a fake arrest for breaching coronavirus guidelines. The whole kidnapping took less than five minutes as he handcuffed Miss Everard and stuffed her in the back of the rented vehicle. He then drove to Dover in Kent, where he transferred Miss Everard to his own car before traveling to a remote rural area nearby. It was there that he raped and murdered her, strangling her with his police belt. The next day, as the search for her escalated, Cousins bought petrol, which he used to burn her body inside a fridge. Miss Everard's remains were found several days later in a wooded area Mr. Cousins owned 60 miles southeast of the capital in Kent. The judge, Lord Justice Adrian Fulford, described Mr. Cousins' actions as grotesque. Cousins pleaded guilty to Everard's kidnapping and rape and admitted responsibility for her death, and in July he pleaded guilty to her murder. He was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life order. You went missing up in um, London somewhere, um, what, about a week ago or so? Uh, why is, why, why, why would I have personal interactions with her? <coughs> with what I know her, so you must have something to say that I, I know her. I've got nothing myself. I've got no choice. I'll go back to you in the room in a minute, all right? But how do they call you? Number 5. Marcus Eberhardt the Georgia Supreme Court upheld the murder conviction against an ex-East Point police officer for fatally tasing a handcuffed suspect. Former Sergeant Marcus Eberhardt's murder conviction in 2016 was a rarity in Georgia, where district attorneys have often unsuccessfully tried to prosecute cases in which suspects died at the hands of police. In 2014, Eberhardt and his co-defendant, former Corporal Howard Weems, responded with other officers to a domestic disturbance call at an apartment where Gregory Lewis Towns Jr. was with his girlfriend. When an officer tried to handcuff Towns, he took off running into the woods. After Towns fell, an officer caught up to him and handcuffed him. When told to get up, Towns stumbled and fell again, saying he was too tired. By this time, Eberhardt had arrived and he told Weems to tase him. When Towns tried to get up but collapsed again, Weems applied a taser on Towns' stomach, and Eberhardt applied his taser as well. Weems, who was also charged, was convicted of involuntary manslaughter. By the time paramedics arrived, Towns' heart had stopped beating. He was later pronounced dead at an emergency room. Eberhardt is serving a life sentence. I think moving forward, I would no longer put my faith in police officers, the courts, or anything like that. I'm sorry that this incident happened. I'm sorry for the town's family. I know there is nothing I will ever be able to say. I just really don't want to hear anything he has to say. Gregory's not here to respond for himself, so I did it for him. Number four, Jeffrey Dean Moreland. Former Western Missouri police officer has been convicted of killing a woman who was assaulted, shot in the head, and left in a bathtub at her home. Jeffrey Dean Moreland, a 54-year-old man, was found guilty of first-degree murder and armed criminal action by a Cass County District jury and was sentenced to life in prison plus 50 years. Moreland is married and has two young children, as well as several adult children from previous marriages and relationships. Assistant County Prosecutor Jamie Hunt told jurors the killing amounted to an execution. Prosecutors said DNA evidence tied Moreland to Robert's death as well as separate Harrisonville rape and the killing of a 75-year-old Kansas City woman. Moreland also faces charges in the other two cases. Moreland reportedly worked as a cop in Grandview from 1984 until he retired in 2005. Later on, he was sentenced to an additional 30 years in jail for a separate murder in Jackson County and 10 years for the armed criminal action conviction. Moreland pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and armed criminal action in the death of Nina Whitley, 
who was found dead in her South Kansas City home in 2010. I can't seem to let everything go, and I just wanted the defendant to know that he was an animal for what he did to my daughter. Number three, Jesse Hernandez. A former cop found guilty of shooting a Selma police officer has been sentenced to life in prison. It was the maximum sentence possible for Jesse Hernandez Jr., who was convicted earlier this week of aggravated assault of a public servant for the shooting of Selma police officer Tiffany Kiram. He also was charged with shooting another Selma officer in the same incident. That case is still pending. District Attorney Nicholas LaHood, who helped try the case himself, had urged the jury to return with a life sentence. During closing arguments, LaHood said, this case comes down to one millimeter and one millimeter being aggravated assault and capital murder. Doctors had testified that Kiram, who was shot in the face, was lucky to have survived the wound. The military surgeon who operated on Kiram told the jury the bullet exploded as it entered her nose and exited her left ear, explaining further by saying she immediately lost hearing function in that ear and she immediately lost balance function. In his arguments, defense attorney John Bud Reitnor reminded jurors that his client wasn't charged with capital murder or even attempted murder. However, the jurors ended up giving him the maximum possible sentence. He had murder in his heart. He wasn't thinking, I just want to aggravate it and assault them. He had murder in his heart when he did that. Two officers gunned down in prison. Ex-cop equals cop equals killing guy. Number two, Braulio Gonzalez. A former Miami-Dade police officer charging with sting multiple girls was sentenced to life in prison. Braulio Gonzalez, a 48-year-old man, was given the life sentence by Miami-Dade Judge Miguel De La O at a hearing when the two victims spoke about their ordeal. One of the victims told him, I will forever have this scar that you imprinted on me. The allegations against Gonzalez first surfaced back in 2018. Prosecutors said Gonzalez missed one girl for two years, from the time she was eight until she turned 10. That victim told detectives that Gonzalez would wake her up to her and once he held a gun to her head. He allegedly threatened the victim by saying he would kill her and anyone else in the house if she didn't comply with his demands. A jury had taken just 15 minutes to convict Gonzalez on lewd and lascivious molestation and armed kidnapping charges. The judge announced, There'll be no closure here. You'll go to prison and they'll continue to live with it. I hope they're able to overcome it. Gonzalez's defense lawyer, Bruce Lair, had asked for a 25-year sentence, noting that he was a dedicated officer who saved multiple lives during his time on the force. His wife of four years also testified on his behalf during the trial, along with two police officers. But prosecutors argued that Gonzalez lived a double life, being a violent person behind the scenes. Number 1. Nicholas Gianchiti Former Providence police officer Nicholas Gianchiti was convicted of second-degree murder and using a firearm while committing a crime of violence in the fatal shooting of his neighbor in Cranston. During the trial, the trial justice found that there was nothing that would suggest that the defendant intended to prevent entry into his home and that therefore there was no evidence of a breaking and entering crime. Nicholas Gianchiti never denied he shot James Pagano, a Cranston firefighter, after a 2008 argument turned violent. Pagano was killed after he confronted Gianchiti for cursing at his children during a birthday party. Gianchiti had chastised the children when a stray tennis ball struck his wife's parked car. Gianchiti testified that he pulled the trigger in self-defense after Pagano came to his door and punched him in the face. Witnesses reported that Gianchiti fired several shots from a handgun at Pagano, who was pronounced dead at a hospital shortly thereafter. Gianchiti was sentenced to life in prison for the crime. In no way is clemency a reward for that criminal conduct. You can see that smiling face. How can you not miss it? <laughs> it was always like that. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.